you want to make sure that you're rational. You want to make sure that you're clear-headed. You want to make sure you're alert and aware. That's your goal every morning before you go out into life. To do that, you want to be doing your uh, immersion uh, energy uh, breathing exercises. You want to listen to whatever is the most current or the ones that you have for any of the wonderful lectures events. Welcome. Excitement is now going to get even further because you're going to be able to find out like a bullfighter that there isn't anything that you, you know, uh, any kind of relationship you'll be able to whisk and let the person either be effectively going one direction or the other. And hopefully the major direction is going to be with all the win-win people. Remember the first criteria for you at all times is where's your state of being? Because what you want to do is connect to other people who have the same state of being. So you want to be win-win. So that's the first thing. And that's what all Category 1 people are. They, category 1 people actually get upset if it isn't win-win. They go, wait a minute, if this deal isn't right. I got this much, you need to get the same amount. They, they will be truculent to make sure that you get a fair deal because they want to go further with you. And they know that if you don't do that, that there then becomes edginess and then things fall apart. Okay, so let's review category one. There are most people you meet are gonna be here. It's great to connect with them because they're also seeking win-win. They themselves wanna maintain that the same qualities of beingness that goes with win-win. And what are some of those qualities of beingness uh, that goes with win-win? Well, they're not, they're not thinking evil thoughts. They're not trying to manipulate you. They're into fairness. There are people like that. You can see them, you're gonna find them. There's people with integrity. There's people with, uh, in this room who have appreciation for their life and your life. So there are people who are going to call you on your birthday, say, how are you doing, miss you. They're going to call you on New Year's and say, hope you have a great New Year. They're going to connect with you. Some of these, there's some multiple qualities that can show up. But in this category one, this is the largest category, and they have all the categories you need in order to feel safe. But it's important that you recognize this is the largest category and most people are missing all these people out there. So one of the things I want you to make a goal is I'm gonna start recognizing all the category one people in my life and do great with them. Okay, we're gonna also show category two. Now what's category two? Category two, so much like category one, you almost can't tell the difference. They're, they look like category one. You really do love them, you can connect with them. Uh, many times they're win-win, many times. And you can respect these people, like I was talking about this decorator. Everybody respected and loved her work. It's just, when was she going to produce it? When was it going to come out? It was supposed to be here three months ago. Where is it? And she's all, well, I was off in Europe doing something. You'll understand. And there's a scarf going this direction and this wonderful color. She's a very, very dramatic lady, but very engaging, but, and did great work if you just didn't have to know. I mean, you didn't know whether she was going to provide it on time. Whether She had qualities that she's unconscious about. Uh, that they're win-lose. So these people are just, you just, you can enjoy, you have a great time and they can be in your family. <laughs> Remember teenagers? Most, if you're gonna raise a teenager or a little one, they're gonna be playing category two against you most of the time. You just need to go, your dinner is going in the garbage <laughs> if you don't get down here right now, son. And then all of a sudden, they love it. They go, you're right, you're right, you're right, because they're really integrity people. They really wanna be that way. They just have some bad habits. So, so you can keep them in win-win. Now we're gonna go into another category called category three and we'll enjoy that category in just a minute. I just wanna make sure that you're locked into category one and two. Now, just a few caveats and then we'll go into category three. What if a person comes to you and says, you know, I'm gonna, uh, that, you know, they just say, I'm gonna to come to you and give you everything that you want. I'm gonna be the kind of person that actually is uh, everything you've always asked for I mean, can you believe that? No, you have to actually vet the person. You have to actually check them out and find out if that's what is necessary for you to really know all the facts. Remember, you wanna be a good judge, not a prejudger, okay? So you don't really know how great somebody is and yet you're, you have to find out while you work with them, how are they? So let's talk about business. Um, has anyone ever been to uh, Chicago. Yes, anybody in Chicago? Okay, has anyone ever noticed there's a beautiful building there called the John Hancock Building, right? That goes like this, everybody loves the way it looks. Well, does anybody know the story about the John Hancock Building? 
Well, when it was first built, um, they had a lot of category two workers, okay? So the building had instructions and it was all set up to be a certain way and they were gonna make this building beautiful and they, they did, but they cut a few corners. So they cut a few corners as category two people do because they don't notice. They, they, for them, they go, oh, it's not important. We'll just leave that piece out. It's probably not necessary. So what happened in the first month of the um, building, beautiful tall building, you should see what it looks like now. Um, the windows, all, the whole window would come out on its own and crash to the ground. Can you imagine? Yeah. Not just one window. More than one, a lot, almost all of them, wasn't it? They just kept coming down and they had to um, they had to lock off the space so no one got near there and no one got injured and I was telling this story to Bobby and he says wait that's not the only place that's happened he says, I says there's been other built where was the other building that you were talking about that has that the W right here same thing so you even today uh, the um, Chicago thing was probably 15 years ago W was just longer 20 25 okay anyway the point is that category two people can prevail so if you have workers who are coming into your place to help you build something, if you have coworkers and you say, um, are you bringing that thing so that we can do this thing right in, in, in 20 minutes? And that's a category two person and you just go, Roger that, I got it, I got it. And then you go on feeling great because they're gonna do it and your life's gonna be moving forward. And they don't show up with it because you didn't manage them. You have to know that you have to be alert and aware, which is where the energy comes in to really fortify you to go, oh, you're a great person, you're category two and I need you to call me in five minutes to tell me that you've got everything. And category two people will be fine with that because they know you're supporting them somewhere in their subconscious that it goes, okay, I think that'll be a good idea. They won't get irritated. And then they'll call you and they'll say, I have the stuff, I have everything. They count it you know, over the phone. They say, okay, I'll meet you at the place and then we're all good. But if you don't do that with category two people, what happens? The windows start falling out. Little things get dropped out. Oh, I brought the wrong valise. I brought something that you didn't need, but it was what I thought was the right thing. And then people get frustrated. And then what happens to your level of frustration? Do you like just go, oh, well, no. You get very upset. What kind of upset do you get? Well, you got an upset because you relied on that person and you went off into thinking things were great and you're working out here. And now you got to backtrack all the way to this problem, which is now looming because this person set it up and you now have to go fix all those windows because this happened. So you have many choices. You can blow up at this person, the worker, and really scream and yell. Um, you can be angry at yourself. Or you can say, I wonder why I didn't check the category before I relied on this person because it, it really is doing me no good to yell at this person because it's one of their traits. It's one of their habits. It was, you know, I'm the one that, you know, didn't check first that they were a category two. They're nice. I like them. We can go out and have a beer. But, you know, as far as putting the windows in right, no, I didn't get to produce a result. And now I take the hit. So... And if you yell at them, then you just X off one more person into your life, right? You just create this nasty connection or break a connection when it doesn't have to be that way. You're going to have lots and lots of Category 2 people in your life. You just have to know to check with them beforehand and have all these ideas set up in advance so that they don't create a building or some project with you where all the windows fall out. So what would Category 3 be like? Let's see. Category three, this is the last category. We have one more after this, which goes into the next presentation next time. But the important thing is that we're covering 95% of the people with this, so uh, one, two, and three. Category three, these people are committed uh, to them winning and you losing all the time. Uh, these people are out there. If you never met one, go to someplace in Manhattan and say, I have some money to invest. You, you will uh, actually learn a lot as you lose all your money. So go with number two. Uh, they don't keep their agreements even though they might say they will. So category three people, you start to pick them up because like category two, they break their agreements. But these people really break their agreements a lot. And actually they break agreements and there's usually some pain involved with it. They break agreement, it really does, you know, uh, screw you up. And the third thing, your agreements with these people will require penalties. So you know, you've had people who are in category two and you say, I'm just, you know, you're going to have some repercussion if you do this. 
that's sort of tending towards category three. But if you have a real category three person, then if you make a deal with them, you have to require penalties. And you may remember there's a story, there was a lady who here who had somebody visiting her home and she unawarely uh, didn't check the trust portion, the safe portion, she didn't check her list. And the only thing she did right was she, uh, the second time she categorized this guy as a category three and so she put in a damage deposit, paid in advance. Now, we'll give it back. Here's a piece of paper if everything's fine. Here's the damage deposit and the rent. And of course, the damage deposit is way over any kind of damage. What would you say by category, uh, diagnosing a category person? You say, I, I wonder if they're category two or category three, because uh, I'm putting this penalty in. Well, you can diagnose a category three person right away uh, a bad category three because they won't make the agreement. They'll go, I'm not, I'm not staying there. No, I'm not doing, that's too stiff of an agreement. If you, can't, if you can't just trust me and let me stay here, something's wrong with you, you know, and do psychology on you. How's that working out? Listening to those people, and then you go, oh, I'm so sorry. No, I really do trust you. No, you don't. We're not doing trust. Trust has to fit that trust list. They fit the trust list, then you get down to doing whether you're going to make agreements. Because remember, we have lots of things to do in our life. And if you're going to do things in life, it requires what? People. Lots of people to work with you. People to work on your companies. People to work in your home. People to work with you on projects. People to marry. People to relate to. People to have children with. You, but if you have a Category 3 person, I wouldn't marry them. Uh, this Category 3 people, you would have to have penalties all the time to keep them in line. Because category three people, the big difference in them is they are committed. I didn't say consciously. You might say to them, you know, why do you do that? What's wrong with you? And then the old, 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 um, you know, story about that that comes from, you know, Zen state, Zen koans and different poems is that, well, <clears throat> these people, uh, you can compare them to like, you know, reptiles or snakes or something, which is that's just what they do. Snakes bite. So why did you make an agreement with a snake? You know, so the point is that these kind of people will bite. And so you need to know that you really gonna have to have penalties. Now, why are we going through this? Because I'm telling you, you can't avoid any of the three categories. You, you can't avoid any of three. You go to work, you're gonna have all kinds of people at work. If you work in the emergency room, you've got every kind of person who works there with you, category one, two, and three. And you need to be able to be successful with all of them, right? So you won't give your keys to somebody in category three and say, would you take my car up to the restaurant and pick up pizza for us and bring it back? You will not end up with your car or the pizza. So you don't have to give up on people though. Um, what's really important is that you, you, you may not recognize people right away uh, and then you get frustrated, you may get angry, which is, which is of no use, uh, why? Because, you know, you want to get angry at a snake? How good is that to change the snake? The snake change? Not at all. Some people are unconsciously just sort of operating at that level. Now, what's true about category three people? They're egalitarian. And that wonderful word that comes from social movements. They're egalitarian. They treat everybody the same. So it's easy to find out about category three people because they have a whole long list behind them of if you ever get to meet you know, family members or previous friends or people they worked with that really um, you know, had similar experiences. So the most important thing to get at this point <clears throat> is that although it seems like category three people are really yucky and that you're, you know, I didn't recommend mo marrying them, that's not always true. No, it's not. Believe it or not, if you maintain win-win plus keep yourself protected, plus make sure there's penalties when you deal with these people and still you maintain your way of beingness, the people are gonna surprise you. The way God's got it set up that some people actually do evolve out of different categories and you know people, we have people actually in this room who I know who are delightful people, some of them extremely attractive, who are category three. You know, when I knew them years ago, they wouldn't answer the phone. They would make agreements and have no idea, no, couldn't care less about keeping them. Uh, why do you even want to call me? She would say, you know, there's no reason because, you know, I'm off doing something else. Um, just a real category three. Anything that you wanted to occur with this person wasn't going to happen. And then what happened was over the years, I maintained a win-win relationship with her. I just said, 
you know, you can be that way, but I'll protect myself. You know, there'll be penalties if you do anything, but I still want to know you and connect you and care for you. And then over time, she just all of a sudden with doing the breathing exercises and getting interested in the energy and getting more and more involved in doing the practices, she moved up to category two. It just blew me away. And also her, some of the people who know her just said, can you believe how much she changed? That course really works, that's amazing. That all of a sudden now she's actually keeping some of her agreements. And of course she blows a lot of them still, but she keeps a lot of them that she never kept. Plus she shows up for family events, shows up for parties on time, dressed appropriately, whereas before it was never that way. And you know, everybody's like tails and she comes in, you know, yuck. And so this, um, this lady who I sustained my friendship with, remember, still protecting yourself because category two, now she's category two, those people, you still have to have some type of precaution, some way of making sure there's an agreement that'll stay win-win. You get an ice cream cone if they get one. And so then over time, she kept doing her exercises, coming to this energy immersion event uh, every month, wonderful series. Uh, there's, we have an audio series that you can listen to once a month that really charges you to go into business. She's listening to that. And then over time, a couple of her family members called me and said, you don't believe what happened to so-and-so. I said, what? She says, she's like the star now of the family. She's like organizing all of our events. She's calling people to make sure they're on time. She's actually uh, <laughs> sponsoring events for all of us and making sure we're in the energy. And I said, really? So she actually moved up to category one. She now is concerned with integrity. Remember those signs, integrity, fairness, they generate that. So you don't wanna just say, just because somebody was in category three that they're not gonna move. They can move that. And remember, these are all people you do this categorization with uh, who you've already decided up front that they're people you do wanna deal with. It may, you know, it may not be so wise to try this whole program out with someone who you meet in a dark alley on a street in the middle of the night. I don't think you need to do that. That's not the safe category. Do this with your coworkers first. Do this with your children. Do it with everybody and find out how you can have a win-win relationship. Whether it's a coworker, a project manager, a stepdaughter, all you have to remember is that you have to have your being state so that you're connecting to the energy and the energy is all about win-win. It's all about you having a wonderful life and them having a wonderful life too if they want to treat you within the categorization that's correct. And if they don't, then you, know, you can go with the category threes and have a mild surface relationship. Another way to recognize category three people is because they're so unconscious about keeping agreements and what's going on is that um, they're, besides letting you down, they're a little bit argumentative about it. Like if you call them on it, they're not very friendly about you saying, hey, you didn't do this. They will have not only excuses, but you're wrong for bothering me. You should feel bad. You shouldn't say that. It's your fault this all turned out. They'll have lots of excuses, and they'll try to make you feel guilty. So if you want to be uh, someone who really can ferret through all the people you're going to meet at work, all the people you're going to meet on a trip, everywhere, then you need to know how your interactions are going to be successful. And one of them is that if you meet a Category 3 person, they're going to try to make you feel guilty, right? Because that's how they get off of you calling them, you know, to recognize that, hey, would you like to come into reality? What is reality? Reality is the truth. Reality is what's really going on. Would you like to come into that? So you can, you don't have to, if, if they dr dump a lot of attitude or emotions on you, you don't really have to take that in. You can maintain your energy win-win approach. Now, is that easy to do? when somebody really blows it with you? No, it's not at all. Because the person's going, hey, you know, you're, you're wrong, you shouldn't be asking me for that. Uh, all the things you're complaining about has nothing to do with me. That's category threes. They have lots and lots of mean statements to come back. Now, you wanna stay win-win. So, as long as you can sustain yourself in the energy, you can still keep that being state and protect yourself. Um, and actually makes sense with all your relationships, whether in category two or category three. And once you find out that this person's in category three, that they're not gonna keep their agreements, then you really, really want to make this solution to every day before you leave to go to work or go, home, go out into the world, you have to recognize, oh yeah, I'm gonna meet a bunch of people. 
And if I'm going to be a bunch of people, I better be sharp at knowing my lists. And if you haven't filled out the list, you need to continue doing that. And I'm going to be sharp at seeing, is this person a category one, category two, or category three? And you can easily find out because the people with wonderful integrity are going to really expand in front of you and really carry the ball. And other people are, you know, in category two are going to be unconscious about it. And then category three are going to give you a tough time or try to make you feel bad. By the way, should you feel bad, you know, even if they say, you know, really, you know, you shouldn't have trusted me or you're the Dumbo, why, why did you do this? You know, you shouldn't have included me. It's not my fault. Should you feel guilty or bad or should you start hating this person? No. Why? Because they're egalitarian. They're egalitarian. That means they treat everybody that way. If you, if you were with them earlier in the day, the people that met them get the same treatment. So to be angry at, say, a piece of fruit or a banana doesn't make any sense, does it? Just because the banana is rotten uh, and if the, um, and then are you going to angry at yourself? Does that change the banana? So you really can't change somebody, can you? But you can open the door. You can certainly encourage them by you representing the energy. So you, when people let you down, make you upset, don't come through uh, with, uh, or attempt to make you upset, don't come through with what you want. If you really want to succeed in managing them, which is what category two is all about, you really can't get super angry at them because it blows the connection. Because they're saying, well, you know, you need to recognize that I'm a category two. And the category three is going to say the same thing. They're always that way. You're not a, supposed to be concerned about changing them. You're just supposed to be importantly concerned about how to handle them. So let's show one person who tried to handle uh, another category and see what they did. Okay. So what happened? Here's a difficult relationship. Go ahead, category 3A. What happened to this person? So this person says, I hate my coworker. She doesn't keep any of her agreements with me. Now this is an actual story. So you think this is a joke, it's not a joke. It actually happened with somebody in this course, okay? All this stuff comes from live examples of people who you know, met different categories. So first, you want to make sure that you're rational. You want to make sure that you're clear-headed. You want to make sure you're alert and aware. That's your goal every morning before you go out into life. To do that, you want to be doing your uh, immersion uh, energy uh, breathing exercises. You want to listen to whatever is the most current or the ones that you have for any of the wonderful lectures, events. And also, you want to do all the physical and mental exercises so that you can go, OK, this is not going to work. My being at hate, anger, is not going to change a rotten banana into a good banana, right? Or change a snake and not be a snake. So th some people come unconsciously in a certain way. So what, how can I still deal with them? Go ahead. I'm a person who can succeed in a win-win relationship with people in category three. So she already decided that her friend is a category three because the number one category thing about category three people is not that they're mean. Matter of fact, there can be category three people who sell you stock, who sell you uh, insurance, can sell you anything, sell you their lawnmower, and they can be really super slick, sweet people, maybe, but they're not gonna keep their agreements with you that you're gonna be win-win. It's gonna be you are gonna be win-lose. They're gonna win and you'll end up losing. So she says, I'm going to be a person who can succeed in a win-win relationship with people. All that's saying is that no matter what category three kind of person you are, I'm still going to make sure that you are not going to take uh, the whole pie. We're going to share it. It's going to be win-win. So I'm going to be that person. So what would that person do? How would they succeed? Well, first, as we went over, you're going to do your energy exercises because you, in the, doing the energy, you become 360. You become alert and aware to be able to handle all types of things everywhere around you. Okay. So what's the next thing? I know that I must negotiate my options and making agreements with people that are category three. By negotiating, I'm saying put in certain criteria that are gonna have to be met with category three. Remember, category three is different than calling your son to come to dinner, okay? Because you know, you're, you're not gonna cross him off forever uh, just because he didn't come to dinner. You're not gonna arrange dinner always in Gordon. That's a one event. But with category three people, you have to make strict agreements to make sure that you're protected. What's the next thing you do? So you limit the number of important projects. In other words, you don't give all your bank account to a category three person who wants to handle your investments. Have you ever heard that? You never distribute your investments, not just with one person or one type investment, 
uh, not in what you call them, but in all different areas and, and with different people. You don't put all your money in one bank even because they haven't insured the banks uh, the same way anymore so that if banks did go down, you would be safer to be in multiple banks. So you limit the number of important projects that you involve this particular category person. And this, this happened you know, in, a, in a medical environment where this one lady was working with another lady and her coworker, she had to see her every day. So you might say, I'm just not gonna deal with that person, but she had to see her every day that she came to work. So what is she gonna do? Is she gonna feel bad about herself for being in that job and just quit the job? Is she gonna report this person? What is she gonna do? Next. So number four, I make sure that there's a well-defined written on paper or in an email with their acceptance of the quality of and the due date of the result I'm requesting they have agreed to. Look at all that you have to do. It's a lot. But have you ever heard that like an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? Yeah, okay. So with a category three person, what's the problem if you don't do this? How much time is it gonna take once it hits the fan? A lot. Once you have a really upsetting experience, it takes a lot of time to recover from it, to fix it, and get over it. So make sure that you have all kinds of protections written in, and sometimes if you don't know what they are, then you could ask other people, ask your facilitator, or in, in a group, in, in, in the energy group that happens every day on the phone, you can figure out, what do I do to make sure that this person is gonna follow through and then I'm not gonna go into the lose category with them. It's gonna be win-win. Because you're still gonna want them to win because it would be unfair that you just made some decision that you know this person is, you know some like the movie, some person who should be X'd out of the world. Uh, they're not that way. These are regular people that you deal with that are just unconscious that they're operating at a win-lose uh, thing. And, you don't, you don't want to get caught by that. What's the next thing you do? Uh, you have written an email document, documentation of repercussions that they've agreed to if they don't provide the result as defined. So what that means is that the person knows up front what's going to happen for no performance. Okay? And then you're not going to get burned when, the, when things happen. And you want it written. Why do you want it written? Don't remember it. Mm -hmm. They really won't. Or they'll say, worse, Remember I told you these people always try to put you in guilt. They'll go, you don't remember it right. What we really said on that day, everybody in the back's going, you don't remember it. What we really said on that day was I was gonna do this and you were gonna do this and I did this and it's all your fault. You're just a bad manager. You're actually a bad person. I don't know why I got in touch with you anyway. You know, and they dump all that on you. Now, while they're doing that dumping on you, is that unexpected? No, that's what category three people do to cover their tracks. It's unconscious. It looks like it's conscious, but it's unconscious. And what happens is that you have to not listen to all that, not get upset at them because they're egalitarian, they do that with everybody, and not feel guilty. Just get documentation of what's gonna happen if you don't provide the result. Now, what would you do with a person who wouldn't put a, uh, re wouldn't agree to a repercussion? Hmm? Okay, I have a very famous lawyer who's actually I've referred to some of you people in here that living life through so many different parts of the world. I've met a lot of great people. So I met this one lawyer and um, this is years ago and I said, what are we gonna do about uh, this situation? He says, well, I'm gonna write a contract. And so I read the contract and I said, this, I don't know, this contract is really interesting the way you wrote it. I said, you've got this part about what we're gonna do together. I mean, it's very little about, you know, that we're gonna go get this, we're gonna take on the world, we're gonna create all these things, it's gonna be his responsibilities and my responsibilities. I mean, you've just got very little on that. You've got all these pages about what happens if it doesn't work out. Why do you have all that? So, very calmly, he said to me, he said, the purpose of a contract is not just to say what you guys are gonna to do to agree to do with each other. But the purpose of contract is what's gonna happen, how you're gonna treat each other if you have to exit. If you don't put that in there, it's not a contract. The purpose of contract is how you're gonna be able to leave each other, not, oh great, we're gonna go accomplishing. That's in your mission statement and all these other things, right? So after that, I learned that contracts have this wonderful part that talks about the part that we like we're all creative people, we're artists, we, we're inventors, we're writers, we're scientists, 
we're mothers, we're all kinds of people, we're having a great time in life, we want the contract to talk about that and that's, let's make sure you know about that. But for the lawyers who are very intelligent, they say, no, 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 you don't understand, people don't necessarily fall out the direction. You may have misjudged this person. I said, nah, we didn't misjudge a person at all. This guy's like, I didn't tell him categories, but I said, this guy, you can vet him. I, you know, I've checked other people and all these other things about category one. He says, other things can happen that you don't know about and you'll need to be prepared for that. So I said, okay. So he wrote the contract. It was the best contract I've ever seen, made total corrections to guiding this relationship. And it all turned out great, even though it had all these kerfuffles. So I sent this uh, gentleman, I sent some friends to this gentleman. He made another contract for them and they had a similar experience and they avoided all kinds of upsets. But then I had another person who um, was really, really upset at somebody. Uh, and, uh, she, and so she went to this lawyer and then she called back and complained to me. She said, why did you send, this is a different lawyer, why did you send me to that lawyer? And I said, he's great, he's one of the top people in the whole United States. Go, go look at his records in Martindale, which is the book on lawyers. And uh, she said, no, I think he's a heartless, cold, you know, I didn't like him at all. I said, what do you mean heartless and cold? You need to get out of that situation where, you know, the problem. I said, what happened? Tell me what happened with the conversation. She said, well, he just sort of sat in his chair and he made notes and um, I told him and I cried and I, I told him how horrible it was that I got hurt that with this thing and how damaged I was because of this relationship and how so much, and then I said, are you listening? I said, yeah, I'm listening. I said, did you ask the lawyer if he was listening? He says, oh yeah, I asked him too multiple times. Are you listening? And finally on the third time, you know, cause he didn't, you know, he didn't even offer me Kleenex. I'm like dripping, my eye makeup's going all over the place. You know, and I'm telling him how horrible it was that I got damaged and now I'm here with you and you're gonna fix it and you gotta understand the pain. Um, he said, ma'am, you're paying $7.50 an hour for this. I don't think it's gonna do any good about the situation to go through the part that you're sharing. I think we should talk about how we're gonna fix this thing. And she said, but you don't, you, know, you don't feel my pain. You don't realize what I've gone through. You don't realize how horrible this has been for me. Ma'am, the clock's still running. If you want to continue with that, we can. In other words, he's very kind, very neutral, but the fact was he was trying to guide her away from the fact that, you know, a uh, snake, what do snakes do? You know, you just miss, what he's saying in one simple sentence is, you miscategorize the person. You thought they were category one, you had nothing to worry about, they're gonna keep their agreements, they'll be at the movie early, they'll have popcorn for you, they'll even save a parking space for you. There's people like that, we all have people in our lives. You miscalculated, this person's not a category two, this person's category three. But that's what he was saying in so many words. So I had to clear her up because she hated the lawyer. And I said, no, he's trying to guide you away from the fact that yes, we can talk and doing your energy exercise, we can get you through the pain of all this has gone on with you. But what he's trying to do to fix this problem, that's not so relevant. We're not going for um, him feeling all your pain. We're, we're want him, wanting his expertise on how he's gonna fix this. And you want a guy who's really gonna fix it. So really your conversation with him could be like, what are you gonna do specifically and how are we gonna even this up so we can turn it back to win-win? Because he's the kind of guy who can do that. And so she was crying on the phone and she said that, you know, I still think he's mean. He didn't even show even a tear about my problem. Are you sure he cares? I said, see what situation he creates for you. See what kind of solution, then we'll compare solutions with other lawyers. She says, you can do that? I said, yeah, we'll check to see what kind of lawyer he is. Just because he's best, we'll see if he compares to other people. We'll get more than one member, more than one evaluation on a person so you can determine, do they fit in the trust category? Do they fit in the friend category? Do they fit in someone you want to extend love to? So she said, okay, I'll go back. So she went to him and when she came back, she was like a completely different person. She says, I enjoyed the meeting. She, I said, you did? I thought you were upset at this guy and you hated him, he was a heartless, Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and you said he's like all lawyers. And I said, uh, what about that? She said, you know, it was interesting. He had all these solutions that he'd written out that he handed to me that he thought would be ways that we could not only even the score, but that we could win and win uh, rather quickly with, uh, you know, so even the damages would be taken care of. I said, well, how's that feel? She says, it really feels great. I said, do you want to check another lawyer? She said, mm, I don't know, this sounds really great. Don't we want to trust him? I go, well, it doesn't hurt to get another opinion because remember, we're judges. 
We want all the facts. So let's see if somebody else who's in the field who does the same thing, you know, we'll just pay him for an hour's worth of work, have him review what this lawyer did, and see if it's fair. She says, you can do that? I said, yes. <laughs> you mean you can have one lawyer look at another lawyer and say, yes. And they're all bound by uh, fiduciary agreement. They can't say a thing. I said, wow, I didn't know that. One lawyer will, one lawyer will value another. Yeah, and he has to be honest. They're all he's in trouble. So she handed this, she took the, we took the stuff to another guy, and he said, he vetted this guy. He says, are you kidding this guy? Everything he said is even stuff that I haven't thought of. He teaches at the law school. You got the right guy. That's the letter she got back. And he didn't even charge her when the other guy was just as expensive. And she got her result. But what I want you to do is you've got to recognize when you're meeting people that you've got to surf at your own risk. You've got to do this categorization thing. And if by chance you miscategorize, you think that's going to happen? Yes, we're all novices at this. You're just starting, but you'll get better. And Bob will tell you stories about people he's hired who he thought were great guys and people who worked with him on buildings. Same thing, class fell out, you know? He miscalculated. There were category two people that were just unconscious and didn't know that that was his code of ethic. And so since then, like you all, he's worked very hard in his company to make sure that he is not only hiring category one people, but there are category two people that are there and he puts in routinely all kinds of agreements so that you know, the person will keep the agreement. And if you meet a category three person right away and you don't have any protection, you better reach out to someone here and discuss you know, what is it, or with some professional, what is it you can do. But you don't want to lose your upbeat, win-win being state because that's what you're going to try to connect with that person in the future. So, do you see how Will Rogers was able to go forward and say, I never met a person that I didn't like? Because he would lived enough of life that he said, you know, you can tell who's a bad banana by using this te technique, and they're going to be a bad banana all the way, all the time, so I'm not going to let them, you know, run my company. There was a famous basketball player who was talking about bad bananas, uh, you know, category three people who, you know, unwittingly take your money and they don't even feel bad about it because they weren't trying to take your money, it just didn't work out. That's how they say it. He said, they asked this uh, basketball player, this famous basketball player, said, listen, um, what is it that, uh, who are you investing with now? How do you invest? Um, I mean, what, do you get the best interest? Do you get the best return on your investment? He said, absolutely, but I have a rule. You know, here he is, he's here, he's got a rule. You wouldn't think a basketball player would be that much into knowing finance, but he does. I have a rule, you know, that takes care of all the investors for me. I really don't re care about return on my investment. All I care about is, is there gonna be a return of my original investment? In other words, I'm not gonna lose principal. Do you get it? So he had figured out, even though he had no education on this, that I have to worry first, is there any possibility there's gonna be a win-lose here? So that he makes guarantees on all his investments, and the most wealthy people in the world do this, so that his downside risk, no matter what happens, is protected. And there's ways to do that in certain investments. And if you do that, then you do get the upside when, if you're right. But if you're wrong, you miscalculate it, you still have handled the fact that the category could have been off and you get a lose situation. So there's a movie I wanted to show you. And this movie is just a little bit interesting in terms of the fact that you're going to walk out of here and you're going to be so strong and so able to categorize people because you've got your lists. But you have to be agile. You can't be like, I'm going to force this through. You know, you're not going to disown your son right away just because he doesn't come to dinner on time. <laughs> you know, you're not going to ground him for life. You're going to actually learn to deal with these people because you have to, and you will make a ton of success in your life. And I'm talking about people that I've related this whole categorization program with, and they have taken it and run with it and made so much money in their businesses because they keep hiring the right people. This is a fun movie about two people who don't know each other very well at all. I'll feed you the information. What's really cool about them is they're really trying to make it in life and meet other people, trying to connect with different people. The young lady actually is looking for the best relationship she can find, and he happens to be one of her friends that she talks to often. They're sort of buddies. And um, they have really you know, heated discussions because he's constantly telling her about whether she picked the right guy to go out with or not. So you have to be ready with every person. You have their category three, two, one, that you're always going to be you know, on your toes, ready to go, and being able to see where you can take the relationship because 
you don't know what's going to happen two months down the road, three months down the road. As long as you stay like her, she stayed win-win. She never left. She stayed a wonderful person. And you don't, you don't know how the relationship's going to go, but at least he's trying. He's going to make We'll see where she takes it. The other guy shows up as a great, what, category one person, right? He keeps all his agreements, takes her eyes, reliable. So she'll have to make her decision. But right now, obviously, something's happening. Okay. All right. Let's have some light. Okay. So there is a, a sheet that everybody has that is your exercises to stay in the categories going forward. And that sheet to give you all the information, I'm going to start reading now because I want you to have that as you, we go forward. And so I'll read you the sheet as we hand it out. But in that sheet, the first thing is that from between now and the next time we get together is that every day you want to notice instances of the energy in action in my life and notice it's an uptick, see where it wasn't so great before and now it's great and then make a note. And we even have a list here that shows you how to categorize your successes so you can start to look for them. Now, if you keep looking, very important, if you keep looking only like he was in the first place, that gentleman, remember? Remember the guy in the beginning? He had just written all girls off. He was just going to be a playboy. So he was never looking for anything serious. He wasn't looking for love. Are you, are you clear about that? So what you want to look for is these things. You'll find love a lot easier if you look for love. You'll find abundance a lot easier if you look for abundance and start noticing it. And then let, it, let us hear about it and send the information here on this wonderful document, which will come in and be able to be read. Now, also, number two, make the actual changes that you want to make. You know, I want to find a ton of category one people. And I want to be successful with category two and category three people. Do you think that might be a good goal? Since that's the way the world's set up? Do you want to write that goal right now? That I want to be successful with category one, all categories of people, category one, two, and three. And you should also make the goal that I always want to be sharp at checking what category a person's in. You want to be sharp, you want to have that goal. You don't want to fall off the, the uh, alert and awareness route. You want to do the breathing exercises twice a day for at least 10 minutes each. We've shown you breathing exercises today for those of you who've uh, been here for the, the entire uh, process. You've seen there's different kind of breathing exercises and we have many more uh, to download to you. Uh, you want to talk to your facilitator at least once a week. If you don't know your facilitator, please uh, check um, with the people in the back and they will help you. If you're watching this by streaming, then you can always um, email um, probably Sarah or Margaret or yeah, Sarah Kellner. Okay, now there's three exercises I want to show you, but uh, for those of you who still have got this like little, like, you know, yeah, it all sounds good, but you know, I, I don't know if I can do this because, you know, I've spent a lot of my time dealing with problem people. I think maybe I should still be like that guy and just write people off. I'm never going to find really great category one people. <laughs> I've had too many burns. And so uh, the other day, somebody said that to me, and, I, and in front of a crowd, I said to him, I said, it's really not the case. I said, the fact is, you've lived your life being so busy, having to take care of all the problems with these category three people that you hired or connected with or married or related to, and there's lots of problems with them that take up lots of your time, and you've all the problems that occurred with category two people who you didn't make any type of precaution, so there'd be plan B, that you've really spent all your time focusing over here on you know, what takes up your time, which is this 20%. And there's this whole 80% of other people which I wanna welcome you to go find and report on in the future, because you're gonna be surprised how many are out there in the category one and category twos that are gonna be wonderful and keep their agreements. So everybody agree to that? That's an added homework, don't get negative. <laughs> All right, I can't let you go out there unless you're gonna be charging. All right, you can do what this girl did, can't you? Wasn't she adorable? Didn't you love her? Yes, okay, now we're gonna tell you an exercise. So this is the first exercise. You wanna move this so he can see it? Sure. All right. So this is the first exercise. What you wanna do is get, uh, no, the first one is you stand in a door. Okay. Yeah. All right, so here she is over in a door. Do you see this? This is called a door well. 
are, they have different names in different parts of the world. But this right here is a door that goes out. This is a beautiful lady who's standing in the door doing the exercise I want you to do. So you stand in the doorway and you put your arms against the door jam on either side. Your arms will be bent, unless you have the shortest arms around. But most people's arms are bent. Hold on firmly. Then with your feet very close together, bend your knees slightly and twist your knees and hips to the right, while at the same time you rotate your head to the left, to the opposite directions. Then twist your knees and hips to the left, while at the same time rotating your head and neck to the right. Repeat this 30 times on each side and try to twist as far as you can and go faster and faster each time. Repeat this at least 30 times or more. Do this with a smile on your face. <laughs> Recognize, just like everything else, you're gonna make mistakes. Don't get stopped in this exercise if all of a sudden your left head goes left when you go left or your right. If your head goes the wrong direction, just recover. You didn't ruin the exercise, you're just learning. Your neural pathways with this energy will start being released and you'll be able to go either direction and very far. And you want to go farther, you notice how she goes farther each time, she keeps a smile and she is working it and you want to go faster and faster and faster and faster. When we did this in China, we did it for a long time. You guys are going to do it 30 times uh, and I would recommend you do it more than one time a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, now, next exercise. Take a pair of white socks, okay? Just roll them up. They can be as heavy as you can make them. You want something that remains as a ball. Then take a flat surface. This surface is, is too soft, but we're gonna use it because it's great to be seen. And you wanna take a flat surface and you're extending her arm, see that? So you take a pair of white socks, you wanna roll them up in a tight ball, and then you wanna put the ball on a table that is located somewhere below your navel. All right, the table has to be low enough so that you can extend your arm completely, okay? That's key. Then, you don't want it partially bent, then you're not gonna get the benefit of the section. It has to be so that your arm is completely bent, They're bent uh, completely extended, not bent. Then grab the sock ball with your right hand and twist it to the right as far as you can, then twist it to the left as far as you can, don't let the ball come off the table. Don't let your hand come off the ball. You want to twist it farther and farther each time you twist. Do that 20 times to the right, 20 times to the left. Then do the same thing with your left hand. It's very important that you keep your arm straight and that you are rotating your entire arm with the motion. Notice the shoulder is not doing anything. This is where all the action is. Very important that you're not going like this, because then you won't get the benefit of this energetic exercise. So now she's going to switch to the other side, and you want to repeat the whole series twice on each side. And the key is that you want to be successful at doing this while you're smiling and uh, your knees are slightly bent, but that you want to make sure that when you rotate, you're not just rotating a little bit here and a little bit here. The benefit of this exercise is you want to rotate so that you feel your arm go like this, and then you feel your arm go like that. You continue, you rotate farther and farther every time. Say that, farther and farther every time. Farther and farther every time. Okay, this one you don't have to do super fast because you really wanna go farther and farther. The other one you wanna go farther and farther, but you, you, don't, you can go really fast and it's a better effect. But this one, you see that when she first started, when I showed her this exercise earlier in the week, it didn't look like this, I'm telling you. So yours may not look like, you may start and get only to here and then come back and only be able to go to here. But eventually, you'll be able to actually do a full, you know, 360, which is the One purpose. Side is One side will always be easier, so don't get tricked by that. Okay, now, thank you very much. Good job. Okay. Okay, she gets prettier and prettier, doesn't she? Okay, the energy just makes her look unbelievable. So every day before you leave your home, remember, that there's a good chance in this world today that you're going to meet people in all three categories. It's the way the world was set up. There's all kinds of people out there. If during your day of going about your business, 
you and me, or you're like Bobby, you're rushing through to try to get through to the important things that you think are important, but you meet any people who have negative, obtrusive, argumentative, caustic, disrespectful, complaining attitudes about you, then what do you do? You have your goal to what? You have your goal to be remembering. To remember what? That those difficult people are egalitarian. That they have the same way of acting towards everybody. You're not the first person in the day that they just dumped on. And make it your goal, like this young lady did here in the movie, to go into action on your only real job, which is what? To get upset at them? To get upset at yourself? To hit yourself? To complain? No. Your only actions, remember the lawyer? What did he say? He said, ma'am, you can keep talking, but it's not going to, you know, I'm not getting to do my job. The clock's still ticking. You're still paying. We haven't gotten anywhere. You're cruel. You won't hear my problem. And you have to be empathetic with people's problems, but what he's trying to quickly get to was her getting the best value for a buck. So your job at all times was to solve any issue between you in a neutral and in the energy win-win approach and other people. So if you find another person, you want to be like this young lady on the screen. She did not drop her integrity or her win-winningness or her ability to love or ability to be alert and aware. Do you see how awake she was with those eyes? It's wonderful. And she took it all in, even when she blew it and hurled herself on this guy to say that, you know, I'm in love with you, the first one. So she made a mistake. How bad was that? She looked like she recovered okay. You will too. Own your goal each day to respond to issues but not respond to other people's attitudes or emotions about you. Remember, category threes are going to try to trick you. Unconsciously, they've gotten away with this for a long time. So you're going to hear all kinds of stuff that's going to try to make you feel bad about yourself or guilty or something. Just don't go there. I mean, is it really your fault that they're that way or that they caused it? No. Is it, are you really responsible for this person actually being this bad and treating this way? No, they treat everybody that way. Your only job, like it says here, is like the lawyer, be responsive to fixing it. That's it. And yes, you'll learn the next time you're gonna move on to a different kind of person, but that's, that's okay. Record each day how many times you succeed at resolving the issues and the energy. Review this morning, afternoon, and evening. Come back, be able to share this. You're gonna have great successes. Every day do your stay connected to the energy exercises. We've just shown them all, along with the breathing exercises. Put them on the survey monkey. Remember that you can join this uh, energy uh, immersion event every month and go on for a year. We have people signing up for more than a year at a time coming up and uh, it's going to actually have a, a much larger impact around the world and you want to be excited to be in that. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. It's been a pleasure being with you. Much love.